Hey, good evening, people. John Shaughnessy here. I'm gonna go off of my uh, Law of Gravity. I think this is Law of Gravity 4. Shaughnessy's Law of Gravity 4. It's a new word in town called Center Gravigal Force. Okay, it's a uh, combination of um, centrifugal force and um, it's, uh, you know, a gravitational force also. So it's, it's not just uh, centrifugal, it's, it's gravitational. So it has a, uh, it has a combined uh, force where it liberates the subatomic particles called the gravitons. Anyways, I'll read this to you real quick and then we'll get into some neat little videos. Some uh, professors out in Australia showing you how, how, to, um, how a, um, a flywheel works. I get my brain in gear. Every time I do a video, it takes me a little while to get my brain going. All right, centrographical force can now be explained. Uh, the missing link in the following forces, centripetal force, Coriolis effect, circular motion, fictitious force, gravitational acceleration, torque, Newton's law of motion, angular momentum, force, momentum, momentum of inertia, angular acceleration, and centrographical. Centrifugal force, uh, centrographical force is at the top. All right. When gravity reaches a saturation point on and in an object of mass, gravity ends up becoming a ratio between mass and density of said gravity. However, that being said, when an object spins like a flywheel rotates on a shaft, as said flywheel rotational tip speed increases and hits a critical speed, to where gravitons get ejected from the tip of said flywheel. This causes a low density condition at the shaft and the inner location of said flywheel where said ejected gravitons go in a both axial direction and flow back into the mass creating constant flow of gravitons thus centrigravical force comes into existence. Much like the all two famous magnetic field line images of our beloved planet Earth where the electrons flow out from the latitude lines and flow back into the poles. This same image can be used for a visual explanation of how gravitons flow out of mass and flow back into the poles or axis located. Now, that being said, Earth is split into two when it comes to the flow of subatomic particles like electrons and gravitons. The separation is at the equatorial plane just like that of the above mentioned flywheel. Gravitons flow out of the sides of the axis out the sides of the axis towards the lower gravity density zones. Excuse me on that one. Isaac Newton just go over Newton's stuff. This is as far as anybody's taking it here. I'm taking it to the next step. Isaac Newton's second law of motion, F equals mass, the vector sum of the external force F on an object is equal to the mass M of that object. Multiply the, by the acceleration vector of the object F equals MA. All right. John Shaughnessy's equation, he was truly here. Centrographical force is mathematically expressed by CF equals MA2. MA2 squared <clears throat> divided by G. CF, centrographical force, is an intrinsic time formula measuring the displacement of gravitons from mass. M equals mass. A equals uh, acceleration squared. G equals gravitational constant. constant and that's Shaughnessy 24, 2015. I have that copyrighted. So don't try to rob me now. Uh, I'll play this guy. It is virtually, it is impossible, okay? Now I'm going to let go. Are you going to be able to hold this at all? Five shot. Can you lift it out? Make it horizontal, hold it, hold it, hold it. Come on, just try to, okay. I want you to hold it out horizontal. See if you can. Hold it, hold it. Oh, come on. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this up to a few thousand RPM, and then I'm going to attempt just that, to hold it from one end and have it out horizontally. Okay, he's cranking now. Watch this, guys. I'm going to let go of my left hand. Oh, what you'll what? see is that the shaft remains horizontal. You can see it going around there. It almost looks as though the wheel is weightless. How does this work? Well, instead of pulling the wheel down to the ground as you'd expect, the weight of the wheel creates a torque which pushes it around in a circle. You may recognize this as gyroscopic precession. For a more detailed explanation, click the annotation or the link in the description to see my video on the topic. Okay. Here, I want to try something more extreme. I'm going to try to lift it over my head with one hand while it's spinning. Wish me luck. But before I make oh, no. the attempt, Rod what? wisely suggests that I first check if I can lift the wheel above my head without it okay. spinning. Let's prove that I can lift it just this end without it spinning. Here we go. Ah. How, I mean, it's just kind of awkward with the hand. It ain't happening, oh. buddy. Oh, I'm going to crush his head. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You're going to hurt yourself, dude. Just barely. Oh, goodness. Do you even lift? Uh, clearly, I do not. Undaunted by my lack of strength, I'm going for it. But I want to make sure that the wheel is spinning as fast as possible to give me the best chance of success. Go ahead, 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh. So, that was perfect. Now I am going to. All right, I'll just stop for a few seconds. I'll give you a little bit of the dynamics of what's going on. I hope you can see this. Uh this uh, laser pen that I have. Anyways, you see the wheel spinning, it's doing about two, three thousand RPMs. Um, what's going on is the gravitons are flying out of the radial tip of this flywheel. They're going out and they're flowing back into the shaft. They're coming up and going in and into here. They're also flowing into his body and they're also coming up his leg. And going into the into his and through his arms, he's like a he's a graviton circuit right now. Release uh, my left go. hand and holding only with my right hand at the end of the shaft, I'll try to lift it up over my head. Pretty cool. This is a 40 pound, 19 kilogram flywheel. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. There you go. Look at that. He couldn't even lift it when it was Beautiful. close when he's holding it right by the flywheel. Now he's holding it right up there. One. All right, see what's going on? It's nice. It's very light. What's going on is the gravitons are coming up through the ground, flowing in through his arm and, and creating a circuit. And these the gravitons are ejecting as fast as they're flowing up. And they're just flowing out into the earth or into into his body or whatever. So he's he's creating a um, you know a graviton circuit, a gravineticaton circuit. It's, so it's electrons and gravitons. Nice. Right. Five, three, two, one. Pretty it amazing. Feels incredibly, incredibly. I mean, he's just whipping like around that. like there's nothing to it. Look at that now. So the graviton, the flow of the gravitons are coming up his legs, flowing through his arm, down the shaft, and right out the radial tip of the uh, of the end of the flywheel here. So it's right here, they're flowing this way and going right out, you know. Sometimes they'll probably they could some curling in like this on the uh, leading edge, but he is supplying a very he's a good supply of gravitons because he's on the earth. He's He's planted right on the earth, so the gravitons are flowing right up his body and right straight through this thing. Oh, look at that, look at that. Hence, weightlessness comes into play. It's just about weightless, look at that. We'll get into how you make it weightless in a couple of more uh, videos. And then I'll wait for my car accident. Anyway, so again, the gravitons are flying out here. They're just flying off into the uh, into the air. He is the 
he is the uh, main supply of gravitons. His feet are stuck right on the ground, and he's just they're just flowing up right through his arm and spinning right out. Some of them are probably curving back into his body, but I'm thinking uh, not. I think they're just flowing straight out. Maybe some are going down to the ground. They're just you know big a big uh, circulation of them. They're going all over the place for the most part. They'll go to the least path of resistance. But because he's planted on the earth, he has a huge supply of gravity. Graviton is just flowing right up into his body and right out again. So he's locked into it. The gravity, he's, he's manipulating gravity. It's flowing out, going out the tips. Look at that, he couldn't even hold that thing up when he was, had his hand right there. And the explanation that they've been giving us has been weak at best. I know. <laughs> Honestly, I have lifted it up with one hand when it's not spinning, yeah. and it feels really hard to lift it up. Like it's yeah. a big effort. Yeah. Well, He's with not this, moving a graviton. Spinning, There's no graviton it felt flow. Like it was just w wanting to go up by itself. Yes. It felt like I was not struggling, like I was not putting in the amount of force that you think to lift that kind of weight. I bet if you let it go, it'd crash down the river. That's not white. <laughs> we can't do that, though. We can't do that part of the experiment. What we could maybe do is I could stand on a scale, and we could see what the weight of me plus that apparatus does while I'm lifting it up over my head. See if I get it's not going to be any change at all. You can see that just my weight is about 72 kilograms. Now, when I pick up the flywheel, it goes up to about 91 kilograms makes sense because the flywheel itself is about 19 kilos that's 42 pounds mm. now we're going to spin it up and i want you to make a prediction as i'm uh, lifting it over my head do you think the scale reading will be more less than or equal yes, to it's going to be no kilograms? change because he's just he's just bringing the flow right up through his body gravitons are what just are coming saying? up through the through the scale make through his legs by clicking on one of the on-screen annotations or if you're on mobile you can click a link in the description yeah, you can check out the video later The wheel is spinning. Yeah, he's on a scale. It still weighs 91 kilograms. You've made your prediction. Let's see what happens when I throw it up over my head. In three, uh, two, one. No prediction. One. It's just going to be the same. He's just, he's the circuit. He is the circuit. The gravity is flowing up through his body. You, but to me, it looked like a shaky mess. Let's watch that again in slow-mo, and I will graph the scale readings. As you can see, during the lift, the scale oscillates around 91 kilograms, the same as it read when I was stationary. So it seems the apparatus doesn't get heavier or lighter when it is lifted while spinning. The only large deviation from the average comes at the end of the lift, when I let the wheel fall so the scale reading drops, and then I slow its descent and so the scale reading rises. So the question remains, if the wheel doesn't get lighter, why does it feel lighter? This demonstration was first performed by Professor Eric Lathwaite. Listen to how he describes the flow. Here goes 40 pounds of wheel as light as a feather. This is not a conjuring trick. This is a fact of science. He sure makes it look easy, doesn't he? Watch it again carefully. A fact about a spinning wheel so far everyone has missed. Professor Lathwaite claimed the gyroscope's properties couldn't be fully explained by Newton's laws of motion. I disagree. But in order to they can't be, they cannot be explained. You can't have something going lighter on you with, with this uh, things of torque and to understand why the wheel feels so light. Force, we first have to consider force. why it feels heavy when it's not spinning. So two-handed, that's as far down a shaft as you can hold it. Yep. Holding the shaft horizontally, you clearly need to provide an upward force equal to the downward weight of the wheel. But this is not enough, because with only these two forces, there would be a net torque causing the apparatus to rotate. So you need to create a counter torque in addition to supporting the weight of the wheel. This requires pushing down with one hand. This is all nonsense. I mean, you know, I'm not putting down these guys as that they got, but Chauncey's law of gravity figures it out. The, the flow comes down, it's coming up his legs, down his arms, and right straight through. And, um, you know, the, the uh, flow is just like right there. It's just right there and it's spinning out. That's why it's light. It's a circuit. It's a gravity circuit. See the same thing on the, um, let's see. Let's go into the classroom. 
This will be good too because this is spinning it here, he's spinning it. It's nice and light. You can't say it becomes. Here they are in here in the classroom. <laughs> Win it. Now, the, the, uh, the meter here is not going to change, okay? It's, they get the little gyroscope, they get the weight on the end, but the, gravity, the gravitational flow is coming up from the base of the table. Wherever the ground is, the flow is coming up and it's going spinning out that way. Spinning out, um, out the, way, out, out the uh, radial tip of the flywheel. So the weight's not going to change. They can move around all, all they want. It's going to stay the same because it's supplying the gravitons to the uh, device. Well, it certainly doesn't become as light as a feather. I can say that that too from having felt it. But it does feel lighter. And I think maybe part of that has to do with the fact that I'm okay. not having to counter the torque with my hand. You know, well, all I have to do is support the weight of the disc, but I don't need look to at the gravity provide flow. any torque with Graviton's my hand. Gravitons are flowing right down his arm and right straight out the end. what makes it feel so awkward when you're trying to hold it when it's He's stacked. locked in. He's in a gravitational torque, lock. Yeah. And you have a tidal lock, he's on a gravitational side, lock with that flywheel. Talking over this guy. He's in a gravitational tidal lock with that flywheel, meaning he's he is supplying the gravitons to the bar, to the shaft, and out the in the inner uh, you know the inner um, section of that flywheel and then just spins right out. So it's basically he's um, Creating, he's supplying gravitons to the, to the to the point where he's making that device almost weightless. Now let's see what they got to say. If you decrease the force on both sides, then it will actually feel lighter. It feels lighter without actually getting lighter. Yeah, yeah. What it does is to decrease the apparent weight that you're mm -mm. feeling. Mm -mm. Okay, a little. Uh, dry erase board activity here. You got a regular flywheel with nobody touching it and it's um, the, the gravity is uh, flowing out the radial tip and flowing right back into the shaft out the radial tip all the way around. So it's uh, flowing back to singularity. I'll zoom in on that. Singularity right there people. Flowing back to singularity. So again up top um, you have the uh, it's a bad rendition of the guy's hand, but he's holding his hand here. The gravity's flowing through his arm into the uh, into the flywheel, and they're injected. It's flowing back, but he's supplying more gravitons than the uh, gravity flowing back into the shaft on both sides, thus making it uh, weightless, or almost weightless. And over there on the side, there is what we call the. Uh, path of least resistance right there so it's just flowing out and just it's just ripping out the, the radial tip now on back here we have the uh, you know you're gonna get a little bit of a idea right there on what's going on with this particular um, wheel that's spinning the gravitons are being ejected out the out the top and just flying out and they're coming in through the shaft right here. So the main supply of gravitons coming right through the shaft. <coughs> it's almost like a gravity vacuum. Excuse me. And we got our little guy here. Here's the dude on the on the on the earth. Here's the grade. He's picking up the gravitons coming right up his leg and right down his hand. You know, right out. Might even probably even leaping right up. He's just like a conduit for the gravitons, and they're going right down the shaft. And then if they're, they're radiating out of uh, the uh, radial tip of that flywheel back to the earth and back into his head, actually. You know, so at least path of resistance. Wherever there's a negative gravity flow, it's going to flow right through him like this. So he's got, he's, got, he's got a clockwise flow and a counterclockwise flow. And then, yeah, it's a, grav it's a circuit. It's a gravity circuit. There you go, people. First time ever explained on planet Earth in this particular time frame. Over and out, John Shaughnessy here, wrote the book Pyramid Gravity Force. Check out my YouTube channels. This is uh, Gravitational Law of Gravity for Shaughnessy's Gravity 4. Fourth Law of Gravity. Uh, I think that's about it. Hit me up with some questions, man. This is what we're talking about, shifting the paradigm. 
going going into the gravity world now. Zero gravity, zero G's. 